I would say a lot of my friends beat me to the regenerative game. Uh, I'm, I'm later to the game. Um, but I'm, I'm, it doesn't mean I don't know more than a lot of those guys that beat me to it because uh, it's interesting. Uh, the, it's the future, literally. And I, I really enjoy working with Tamur because he's a bright, really bright guy and always learn Thank something you. from him. I think the X is on, is, is the future. And Thank you. it's gone up, you know, the, you know, he's working on a autologous exosome. Now that's, that's an interesting product. And what he's talking about is stressing cells. So that's something we, we look at with fat harvesting and potentially with PRP is to stress the cell. And so how can you stress that cell? Well, um, you know, you could ask the patient to fast, for example prior to harvesting the fat or the PRP and that will stress those cells and it will make them potentially more bioactive. It might improve his exo mining. Uh, it's something he should consider, uh, with the exosome sort of the, the new trend is, uh, to design exosomes that have been stressed to a specific condition. For example, Let's assume you want to, uh, uh, to heal a wound. Well, you would, and let's say it's skin. You would, for example, stress uh, cells that would be, could be, um, and I, I really like like umbilical cord cells. These are predominantly going to be mesodermal, but you stress them with some type of stress that mimics a wound. And now they're going, those cells will make exosomes specifically for that. Let's say a burn, you know, you're treating a burn wound. Uh, and I think that's sort of the, the, new, the new things with exosomes going to be stressing them. There, is, uh, there are some really good results that will be presented at MCAS by uh, Sophie Minkes. Uh, she's using exosomes by ExocoBio, and these are rose-based, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but supposedly um, she's getting outstanding hair regeneration with these. She's uh, microneedling and using these exosomes. So I, I think the future is the exosomes. The question is, are we better with T0 exosomes than we are, let's say, autologous exosomes? If you have somebody who has a, a you know, terrible diet, uh, they've been exposed to a lot of chemicals uh, in their water and the food they eat, uh, maybe radiation from the sun. They spend a lot of time in the sun. Uh, maybe they're a smoker, uh, an alcoholic. You know, are their exosomes, in a, their autologous exosomes going to be as good as, as a T0 exosome? I, I, I just can't imagine it would be. So... Um, I'm kind of looking forward to this exo mine. I certainly will jump on board. But that, to me, that's the future. In terms of adipose, uh, I, you know, I, I really am a big fan of, of banking the adipose stem cells. Uh, you know, I don't know that we're going to wind up with the milieu. I've, I've got a case cooking now. We put 70 million cells into a patient. Mm -hmm. And a balding crown. We're going to see what kind of result he got. These are all uh, banked cells, but banked adipose cells, I think, is is a big is a big future topic. And there are a few places you can do it in Europe and in Turkey. There, there's supposed to be a stem cell bank coming up, and in the U.S., there's one in Texas and in uh, Fort Lauderdale. I like the one in Fort Lauderdale much better than the one in Texas. Uh, so those are a few things. All right. Very good. I don't see any other questions. No, um, Tamur, um, I mean, um, there's a question there, from Esmeralda Babamusta. You have seen it, Koray? Uh, I see it. Okay. Cancer so, cells. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the, Dr. Cole, do you have any comments on that? Stem cells pose a risk for cancer cells. Also, she's oh. saying, are these risks disclosed to the patients? 
is there any way to control this kind of risky outcome? Well, yeah. Look, you're first of all, you're, you're not going to use fetal stem cells because you're going to get a teratoma. And I think that's where you're running. You don't know what you're getting with that. Um, with cancer, uh, you know, you're not treating cancer with it. But uh, if you go IV with stem cells, or is it going to feed the cancer or is it going to uh, help the tissue? I don't think that we necessarily know that. You know, these are not cancer-causing necessarily cells. Uh, this is not human growth hormone. Uh, the, these are... Uh, the, these cells are, are going to go to specific locations where cells have been injured. And if you have a high enough volume, they potentially can repair, let's say, uh, a stroke or a heart attack. Uh, but if you had have an underlying pancreatic cancer, uh, is it going to make it worse or better? And I don't, I don't know that it's going to make it worse. What, what are your thoughts there, Timor? It's not going to create a cancer. So, uh, uh, actually, I'm not a medical doctor, so uh, I, I know my place to respond this. Mm. Uh, but most of the times, uh, it's based upon the decisions of the of the clinicians. But most of the clinicians are not using uh, the protocols for for cancer patients if the history is very very near. So, but uh, in terms of uh, explanations of yours, I I do agree most of them. Uh, but also we, uh, so I can, con co I, I can contribute only with the medical device manufacturer side. <laughs> so we are not recommending if the patient is cancer, and we are not recommending our devices that you are going to use on them because we don't know exactly uh, what was going to happen. But also uh, in terms of applications of those uh, protocols or those uh, products, let's say to the patients are also we are limited as being the medical device manufacturers uh, so in terms of john cole's uh, contribution he was talking about intravenous injections so we are never near there as t lab uh, because we are using uh, only the uh, local administration protocols only but uh, so we know our place that we cannot uh, contribute anymore to to the cancer topic it's yeah. a political response, maybe mm -hmm. uh, you can consider on that. But uh, so I, we need to know our place to to respond this. Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, there are a lot of people oh, who use stem cells off? every day, and uh, we don't ever discuss. You know, oh, this how many patients uh, I had developed cancer last year. You know, and I, and I agree with Tamora. If you have somebody with a history of breast cancer, you're not going to lipofill her breast necessarily but right. if it's resected you might and, and she's cancer free you might i don't see any other questions so any final remarks before we close um so dr cole well, me no thanks enjoyed it thank you thank you so much for all your contribution and taking time and being with us, sharing your knowledge and expertise. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Dorok, any, any final remarks? Uh, I'm really thankful to, to, to you at first to create this uh, organization and event. Uh, and also, of course, Dr. John Cole, because it's very excited for me and exciting for me to, to speak along with him. So uh, we, we have learned a lot of things from him again today. So we are lucky. And I also would like to thank everyone who is sparing their time with us to, to, to see our uh, webinars uh, webinar here uh, today. So I'm really great, grateful for everyone. And I, I hope uh, it, it, it's good for everyone too. Excellent. Well, we cannot see uh, Dr. Cole, but uh, <laughs> so any, any final remarks from me is like the TLAB Academy. Uh, it's going to be like, it's almost like two years old. It's, it grew so fast. And uh, what I recommend is you can go to academy.tlab.com.tr and you can sign up to TLAP Academy. We had done 12 worldwide webinars. We have 10 more trainings. So it's a fully, fully loaded regenerative medicine platform. And I highly recommend you can learn a lot from 
from T-Lab Academy. And it's not only the webinars that we do, we do also like hands-on trainings. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were in Marseille with the uh, uh, Guy Magalan, uh, Professor Magalan and, and Dr. Jeremy Magalan. So we did the hands-on together and we are planning also doing more in, uh, in 2024. So please come and uh, be with us. Thank you so much for taking time and attending to our webinar. And I just want to say thank you and have a great night, have a great day, or so wherever you are in the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Bye now. Bye bye. Bye. Four Hair is run by Dr. Cole with 30 years of few hair restoration experience, and we offer the most cutting edge technology available. In fact, the Forehair Enterprise sub-company Coal Instruments manufactures custom-made tools and automated tools for hair restoration physicians all over the world. Our quality, expertise, and skills are superior to other clinics. Our reputation and results are the best in the world. It's time to restore your hair, it's time to choose Forehair. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the little bell button to get notifications of Forehair's video uploads. For online consultation click on the link on the screen or in the video description.